everybody. Today we're going to do a spiny dogfish dissection. We're doing a spiny dogfish dissection because spiny dogfish are marketed shark in the fishing industry and there's a lot of them and we get to dissect them to learn a little bit more about them. They're called the spiny dogfish shark because they do have spines. They have spines on their two dorsal fins. Now these guys have been uh, cut off for our own safety, but they do have spines that they have, and I like to call it the Dorito chip method. These sharks are bottom dwellers. They live at the bottom of the ocean, and their predators are gonna be coming from above. Now, have you ever eaten a Dorito chip the wrong way, where you bite into it and it stabs the roof of your mouth? That's exactly what these sharks are doing. They have these spines on the top of their mouth, so if their predator were to eat them, they chomp down on that spine and be really uncomfortable. And they might even open their mouth again, spit out the shark, and it can swim away to safety, hopefully. The reason they're called dogfish shark is they actually, they don't sound like dogs, they don't bark like dogs, they actually travel in packs. So the spiny dogfish shark are called this because they have spines and they travel in packs. Over the external anatomy all right so we have our dorsal side of the shark which is the top side of the shark and we have our ventral side of the shark which is the bottom half of the shark the lower part of the shark so our fins we have two pectoral fins and they have these pectoral fins so they can swim and balance themselves in the water and also help them steer so these fins help them be able to steer we also have dorsal fins. Uh, not every shark species has two dorsal fins, but the spiny dogfish does. They have two dorsal fins right here, and that's also to help with balance. They have their, um, their caudal fin right here. Their caudal fin is for propulsion. So their caudal fin helps them to move through the water. And the strongest muscle in their body is actually right here. It's called the caudal peduncle. This muscle right here allows them to power through the ocean and swim really, really fast and be a predator. Now sharks have what's called a cartilaginous skeleton. They have cartilage all throughout their skeleton so they can move and bend with really great ease. They can move so smoothly in the water. They actually can bend and touch their tail. So we have our pectoral fins, dorsal fins, caudal fin, and now, we have our pelvic fins. So we either have pelvic or anal fins. They're right here at the back. Now we have a female shark. If it were a boy, and I'll show you a boy in just a second, it would have two claspers, two finger-like projections on the fins. These pelvic fins help with reproduction. Our boy shark has two finger-like projections. These two claspers right here you guys can see are to aid in reproduction. But only the boys will have these two claspers. The females, if you look again, they don't have those two finger-like projections. They don't have those claspers. So that's how you tell the difference externally from a male and a female shark. So sharks do breathe water. Sharks will have between five and seven gill slits. So you can count the gill slits. We have one, two, three, four, five gill slits. So we have five gill slits right here. And those gills allow them to breathe underwater. Now if we look at our gills on the inside, the gills have what we call gill rakers, all right? All these frilly bits actually allow for um, oxygen to diffuse to the heart. So the purpose of having gills is to take oxygen out of the water and bring them to the heart. So sharks also have these things called spiracles. Now, not all sharks have spiracles, but we say spiracles are miracles for sharks. And here's the reason why. Have you ever heard the myth that sharks need to keep moving their whole life or they can't breathe? So they need to keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, or they can't breathe. Not our sharks have to do that. That mode of breathing is called ram ventilation. So sharks like your great white shark, they're gonna have ram ventilation. They're gonna have to kind of keep some sort of flow of water over their gills. They can kind of chill out in the currents um, and slowly go, but they will have to keep continually moving. There are some uh, sharks like um, the nurse shark. 
that have muscular gills. So they can keep moving their gills kind of in the, this like wave-like motion and it allows them to breathe when they're sitting at the bottom. You can see these a lot of times at aquariums where they have those um, muscular gills and you can see them moving and pulsing. Now, some sharks and stingrays also have these things called spiracles. And like I said, spiracles are miracles. These little holes at the top of the head behind the eye are not ears. What they are is they are spiracles. They're holes at the top of the body. So the shark can actually pull water, pull water through the spiracles and push them over their gills. That way they're not getting um, sand from the bottom into their, their gills. Stingrays use this as well. They have the spiracles on the top and they kind of move open and close and they'll pulse and they'll bring that water through. Stingrays, if you've ever seen them, have gills on the bottom half of their body. So if they were to suck up water, they'd suck up a ton of sand. So spiracles are miracles for sharks and stingrays. So we have five senses. We have sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. But sharks have a sixth sense as well. They have a little mystery sense to them. Now sharks do have eyes. We'll dissect the eye later, but the eyes are really cool for the shark. They have um, night vision. They have this thing in the back of their eye, a silvery little layer called a tapetum lucidum, and actually reflects the light so they can see in the dark. Um, think back to your cats or raccoons or deer that you flash light in, um, in their eyes. You'll have this kind of green glowing back. Sharks will do that as well. So if you ever take a picture of your cat, you'll never have a red glare coming back to you. We have red eye because in the back of our eye, it's just blood vessels. So whenever your flash is going off, it's actually reflecting what's at the back of your eye. With sharks and these nocturnal vision animals, it actually is reflecting that tapetum lucidum, kind of like that green night vision goggles that you see on videos and like the military and things. So it's really cool that they have that. They have really good sense of vision. So think to us, whenever you're in the water, uh, what do you have to have in to be able to see clearly in the water? Me, I have to have contacts first, but if I were to go underwater and open my eyes, it would be blurry. But I have to have goggles, and what the goggles do is they actually trap a layer of, of uh, air between the water and my face. So I can be able to see through that air, then see through the water. Sharks would need the opposite. Now their lens is circular, our lens is like a bowl. And so we can see perfectly through air, but it's blurry through water. It's the opposite for sharks. They can see perfectly through water, but in air, it kind of be blurry. So they would need opposite goggles. They would need goggles filled with water for them to be able to see perfectly through air, which is kind of cool to think about. So they have great vision for them to see, but sometimes the water gets a little murky and they need to be able to adapt to that. So sharks have a really good sense of smell. Now, we don't call them nostrils in sharks, we call them nares. So their, their nostrils, or nares, um, are right here underneath their nose. And if you can see, you can count four openings. One, two, three, four. The top two nostrils are for taking in water. The bottom two nares are for expelling water. That way they can smell, the, smell through the water both times as it goes in and out. And this allows them to follow uh, trails for miles and miles. They can smell one drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So they can smell better than dogs. It's pretty crazy. They have a great sense of smell. It allows them to be able to kind of use their nose. It's because your nose knows where the next meal is coming from. And sharks are opportunistic. Whenever they get an opportunity to eat, they're going to have to eat so they can maintain their energy. All right. So sharks do have teeth. Their teeth are pretty cool. Their teeth are in um, rows. And they kind of have this conveyor belt motion to where they'll drop a teeth, uh, a teeth layer, and then the new ones will roll in. And sharks can have between seven and 15 different rows of teeth that will, they'll use through their lifetime. It depends on the species. But for their taste, they have a tongue, but they can't stick their tongue out at you. Their tongue is actually planted at the base of their mouth, and that's how they taste. So in order for a shark to 
uh, taste something, they actually have to bite it. So that's why you get a lot of false bites with shark, um, with uh, sharks, with surfers and things like that. Sharks do have a sense of touch. Um, they have a system called the lateral line system that goes from their snout all the way down to their the base of their tail. And so this lateral line system, it's kind of hard to see on this shark, but you kind of see this line right here. There's a series of pores that connect with the face. It goes all the way along, and these pores have one little hair in them, and they can sense the movement of the water. So imagine you're playing Marco Polo in the, in the pool. Whenever somebody says, Marco, and you go underwater and you don't say polo, and you swim right up next to them, they can feel you underwater. That's a secret pro tip, right? They can feel you mo the movement of the ripples of the water going across their legs. Sharks can feel that as well. Uh, schools of fish will have this as well, this lateral line system, and it allows them to help that along with their inner ear, allow them to move through the water all together in unison. So it's really cool, this, this sense of touch that they do have to feel the movement of the water around them. Smell, touch, taste, sight, hearing. Ha, hearing. I knew I forgot one. So sharks can hear but they probably couldn't hear my voice right now. They hear low tones of sound. So they hear splashing and movement in the water, but they can't really hear those like high pitched tones. They don't have a great sense of hearing, but they do have a, a dull sense of hearing. And let's talk about that last sense, that sixth sense. Sharks have an organ called the ampullae of Lorenzini. Everyone say that with me. Ampullae of Lorenzini, all right? The ampullae of Lorenzini is a series of pores on the snout of the shark. So the shark has these pores going all along their snout. You can even kind of see them here. But what they're for is sharks have this sense, a sixth sense of electroreception. So what that means is they can feel electric pulses in the water. What they, what they have is, if you can kind of see, I'm pinching right here and I'm pinching some gel out of these little pores. Ah, that's a good one. So they have all this gel and these pores on their snout. And so imagine, oh, that's a good one. Right there on the snout, yeah. So this gel actually shakes and moves so they can sense that electroreception. So, if you are a shark and you're swimming in the ocean and there's a flounder, right? and this flounder is hidden beneath the sand. The flounders are really great at hiding underneath the sand and being very good at camouflage. So the sharks will be moving back and forth and you can't see the flounder, can't smell the flounder, can't touch the flounder, can't taste the, uh, the flounder, can't see the flounder, so, or can't hear the flounder. So it's moving through and it can't find it. The flounder has electric pulses going through its body. Anytime your heart beats, it's sending electric pulses throughout your body. Anytime you move or do the robot, whip, 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 it's sending electric pulses through your body. So as the shark is swimming over, it finds the flounder. It can go underneath the sand and be able to catch it and grab it. That's what makes these guys apex predators, top of the food chain predators. They have a sleek, slender body, we call it fusiform, where it looks like a torpedo, and they can move smoothly through the water. It allows them to move greatly. They can, they're can they fast, they have all these great senses, and it allows them to be a wonderful predator. So, I have some rules in my shark dissection classroom. Rule number one, we always have safety first. Safety goggles, protect our clothing, protect our hands, and we also need to be positive. This shark has dedicated its life for us to be able to learn. So I don't allow words like, ew, gross, disgusting. Those words are not allowed in my shark dissection room. Instead, you have to replace it with how scientific, how interesting, and wow. So make sure you're not saying, ew, gross, you're disgusting. If you have any of those words that you need to get out of your system before we open up the shark, this is your moment to do that. If not, how scientific, 
let's dig in because this is going to get interesting. So whenever we cut the shark, sharks have very thick skin. They don't really have um, a lot of fat to them. They have really thick skin. So I'm cutting, we always say armpit to armpit, even though they, these are our pectoral fins like we learned, right? So we cut from armpit to armpit, pectoral fin pit to pectoral fin pit. Um, and does anyone think in your brains a little bit why we call these fins instead of flippers? So think to like a sea lion. Sea lions have those big flippers on their pectoral flippers. We call them flippers and sea turtles. We call them flippers because they move. Fins stay put. All right. So the, thin, the skin is pretty thick and I can just pull up that skin, put my finger under there and cut all the way down to the anus. Don't try this at home guys, I'm a professional. Professional. All right. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Woo! Look at that. So, sharks, the largest organ in their body is actually their liver. So, if you look at the shark, 33% of their body is actually the liver. Now, the liver, I'm going to cut it out a little bit, has three different lobes to it. We have our right and left lobe of the liver. And then we have our middle lobe right here. And our middle lobe, I'm going to cut that out as well, has the gallbladder attached. So this right here, this kind of green colored sac right there is actually the gallbladder. And the shark's liver is so big, and the gallbladder is for storing toxins. The liver is so big because it's one of the most important organs in the body. Now I'm going to rub my gloves together, all right? They're wet, but they're not kind of, they're not squishy. If you rub the liver, you actually can feel all these oils on your hands and it goes a lot smoother. So with the sharks, the sharks have an oil called squalene in their liver. And if you've ever cooked with um, your parents or grandparents or friends, there's some more of that oil coming out, um, and you've put oil in water, you know that oil floats in water. Oil is less dense than water, and so what happens is that oil and that water will actually separate. Sharks don't have lungs. If you think to whenever you are swimming in a pool and you want to sink, what do you do? You let all the air out of your lungs and you sink down to the bottom. You make some air rings or something like that, or you dive for some pennies, but you have to let all that air out of your lungs. Whenever you want to float, what do you do? You sit back on your back, you extend your surface area, right? And you suck in a lot of air and you can float. Sharks don't have lungs, so they can't do that. What they have instead is this oily liver that allows them to have what we call neutral buoyancy. When you're floating on top of the water, you're positively buoyant. When you're sinking at the bottom, you're negatively buoyant. And whenever you're right in the middle of that perfect layer, you are actually in a neutral buoyancy level. So you wanna be in that neutral buoyancy so you can swim through the ocean with the greatest of ease and be able to hang out in that water column. So they hold this, this oil inside of their body. They, they hold it inside of this liver, this squalene, so they can maintain that neutral buoyancy because these are heavy creatures. They're all muscle. There's hardly any fat on them. And they have that neutral buoyancy with that oily liver. So this organ right here is actually their stomach. And their stomach has these folds in it called rugae. Everyone say rugae. Now, rugae are these folds that allow the shark to be able to expand their stomach. So we actually can see those folds are pretty tight in here. 
and they loosen up a little bit down here. So it must, all these gastric juices that we're seeing, it must have just digested something not too long ago. Um, but these are kind of expanded a little bit. And the shark's stomach can expand three times its size. So whenever it's eating, it can actually like bulk eat. All right, they can, uh, they can eat a whole bunch and it can expand their stomach. And this allows them to, to not have to eat for months. We have this J-shaped curve right here. And on top of it, we have our spleen, which helps with our immune system, filters the blood. Uh, sharks also are susceptible to um, viruses and diseases in the ocean. We can't all catch those, but um, they do have to kind of keep their blood clean. We have the pancreas right here. We have the pancreas right here. And all right here are our intestines. Now, for our intestines, if we think to our body, we have these kind of like rows and rows and rows and layers of all these intestines all in our bodies, all like, like a, almost like long, long, long intestines um, that are all kind of filtered through our body. Uh, and we have um, lots of space in our body for that and it takes up a lot. But since these guys are so fusiform, they're so tightly compact so they can smooth easily swim through the water, they actually have what's called a spiral valve. And a spiral valve is basically, I like to think of it as like a slip and slide. So if you've ever gone on like a slip and slide that curves round and round and round and round, it gets you from point A to point B a little bit slower. And that's a whole point of intestines. This right here is a spiral valve. So inside of this spiral valve, we have a delicious and nutritious surprise. You see all these layers and all that goop in between? That's actually shark poop. So how scientific and interesting is that? All these layers, you can see, all these layers allow for absorption of nutrients until you uh, expel it from the body. So we have all this, all this room for us to be able to have um, nutrient absorption through the body. So delicious and nutritious. And that spiral valve helps to slow it down so it has enough time to move all the way through the body. So we do have a female shark and we're gonna get to see if she actually has some babies. But first let's learn about shark reproduction. So sharks have three modes of reproduction. The first is they have egg laying birth. Sharks can actually lay eggs. Now, they don't look like your chicken eggs or anything like that. What they do is they actually have egg sacs that they create. This egg sac right here, this egg casing, is from a horn shark. So the shark actually came out on this side. And whenever the mama shark laid the egg, it actually turned into a spiral. And these guys are Pacific Coast sharks. And so it kind of blended in with the kelp that's around it. Shark, stingray, skates, um, they're all in the same uh, class, chondrichthys, which means cartilaginous sharks. So these skates have these, these egg sacs as well. And so they actually will expel, you kind of can see the hole right here. They've expelled, the, the baby has left the shark egg casing. And so the mama shark will lay these eggs, they'll go down to the bottom, they'll kind of blend in with the, the, the algae and, and sea grasses and things that they can disguise themselves in. And then they are able to just kind of break open that egg casing a little bit, start to learn how to breathe on their own um, with that water. And then whenever they're ready and their fins are getting a little bit more firm, they can swim out and they can start living their little sharky lives. The second mode of reproduction is actually live birth. It's called vivipary. So egg laying birth is called ovovipary. So think oval, egg, ovovipary. We have, or ovipary. We have vivipary, which is live birth. You think of the Spanish word vivir means to live. So we have live birth. Uh, which is basically a placental birth, uh, just like humans with the mom connected to the baby. The baby is getting nutrients from the mom and then birthed. Then we have this kind of like crazy thing called ovovivipary. So we have ovipary, egg laying, vivipary, live birth, and ovovivipary, which is a combination of the two. What the mom does is it has an egg sac in its uterus. 
and the baby starts to survive off of this egg sac, um, this yolk sac. And so they start to grow up, they're getting nutrients, they're still protected by mom. Whenever they run out of that, that yolk sac, then they're birthed live um, and go off into the world. Uh, this also has kind of a tendency for interuterine cannibalism. So you might have heard of the sand tiger sharks. So sand tiger sharks, uh, the babies will actually uh, eat each other uh, in the uterus and the strongest and fittest will survive. So usually only one survives uh, per uterus. And depending on the shark species, they can have um, multiple uteruses. So we have uh, sharks that have a high fecundity. A, um, a high fecundity means they have a lot and lot, a lot of babies. So our spiny dogfish sharks can have a lot of babies. Now here is some examples of babies that were almost formed and ready to be birthed. Um, that we have had in a shark dissection before. And let's see if our shark has any babies. So let's get all of our body parts out of the way. When we do this, we actually um, expose the uteruses. So sharks can, these sharks can have four. So we have one on each side, and then we actually have two up here. Now, these two have eggs, undeveloped eggs right now. So I'm gonna pull them out. It's a really thin layer, so you can just pull them out. And these are actually undeveloped eggs. So we have two right here. And we have, seems like two right here. So two more. So, so far, we have the potential for four babies in the shark. Let's see if I can't find any more. And let's see what we have in here. So this is promising. So this right here is our yolk sac. And this is our developing baby shark. Right here. So we have one. And let's open the other uterus. And here we go, there's another. So let's see if we can find the shark heart. Now before we do it, I want everyone to kind of think in their brains and kind of guess the size of their shark and either draw it on a piece of paper or just look at your hand and try to guess the size of the shark because it might surprise you. Now, before we get to the shark, we actually have to cut through some cartilage right here. So you might be able to hear like the sound of me cutting through cartilage. If I were to cut through bone, it'd be a lot harder, but the cartilage is pretty thick, especially right around the heart because they want to protect it, right? So let me get there. Oh yeah, that was a good little snap there. We go a little bit more shallow here, all the way up almost to the jaw. So we can try to see that heart. So there is the heart right there. Now we have four chambers to our heart. Oysters have two and a half chambers to their heart. And sharks have two chambers to their heart. And this thing called a conus arteriosus. Bony fish have what's called a bulbous, bulbous arteriosus. So uh, that's one difference between sharks, another difference between sharks and fish, other than their skeleton and the way they float and sink in the water. So this, if you guess this size, is the size of this shark's heart. It's pretty small. Their heart isn't quite working as hard as ours to get oxygen all throughout their body. They don't quite need as much oxygen as we do in their blood, but they do pump all that. They have their heart in their, their two chambers here and that back sac is their conus arteriosus. It's not a true chamber, but it does help with moving that oxygen to the, um, to the shark's body. I think we should dissect the eye. So this is a splash zone, so be wary. 
Um, this is really the reason why we wear our safety goggles and protect our clothing because it is a splash zone. Uh, sharks do have this gel inside of their eye and it does squirt out at you. Now, just a reminder, we're looking for the lens of the shark's eye and the lens is actually gonna be a big circle. So we're, let's go ahead and try and see if we can get a good squirt. Woo, there's a little bit. Oh yeah, look at all those juices in the eye. How interesting and scientific and wow, look at that gel coming out. Oh, and here is that lens, that round lens that allows them to see through water. Let's do the other eye. I'll skip that one. See if we get a good splash on this one. <laughs> Safety goggles, guys. Safety goggles. <laughs> it went straight up into the air. You can kind of see that tapetum lucidum there in the back of the eye. That silvery layer right there. And let's get that lens out right there. And the lens is solid. Everyone always asks me, can you cut into it? So let's try it. It's pretty, it's solid all the way through. And it kind of if you like, this is might gross you out, but if you ever eat a gobstopper, that's what these always remind me of. Here we go. So that's what they look like on the inside. They're solid all the way through. Okay, now, the part you've all been waiting for. What does a shark's brain look like? Well, today we're gonna find out. So just like we did with a heart, I want you guys to imagine in your brains or draw it on a piece of paper or look at the palm of your hand and say, hmm, I think this is how big a shark's brain is, all right? And see if we can't bust that, that myth and see if you are right. So the shark's brain is located, I can kind of kind of see it's right in here. And you can kind of feel that where the cartilage is on the shark's skull and kind of see where it feels. So I feel right here, it seems where the brain is. So what we do is we cut from eye socket to eye socket and then we become ninjas. And I'll explain that in a second. So you can hear me um, cut through this is all cartilage and we gotta be really shallow because we don't wanna get that brain. Now, since I kind of have an idea where it is, I'll cut a little bit more. But to get through the to the brain, we have to become ninjas. So on the count of three, we're all gonna say hi together and then we will break open the shark's uh, skull, all right? Haya on the count of three. One, two, three, haya. And there's the brain. So we have our two, these two bulbs right here are actually for a sense of smell. And let me go a little bit farther into this cavity right here. And we can see the rest of it. A little bit more to that brain. And I'll cut a little bit farther back. So you can see just how far it goes. And there it is. That is the shark's brain. There, there, and right there. So if you guessed about the size of an almond, you are correct. They don't have the the too large of a brain, but it allows them to be great predators and to be able to sense all the wonderful things around them and be able to find their prey in the easiest way possible. Because that's the purpose, to find food and swim through the ocean with as little energy as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed the shark dissection today. Don't try this at home and uh, we'll see you guys uh, soon for another video.